So today guys we've got a very short video but it's something that I wanted to talk about because obviously I've grown up playing fighting games and I'd love to get your input on this and where your mentality really sits. So last night we saw that there was a tournament on for Mortal Kombat and shout out to Ninja Killer. As you guys can see here, Ninja Killer absolutely just put on a masterclass. Now I'm not one to praise Mortal Kombat 1. You guys know I'm not its biggest supporter. I don't particularly find joy in playing the game and I don't really find joy in watching the game. However, I was getting into bed yesterday and I did see the competition was on and I managed to catch the last four games. And I gotta be completely honest with you guys. If anyone makes me want to sit down and play the game and specifically play Liu Kang, it's Ninja Killer. Now Ninja Killer went on to win the tournament and there's a quick clip here. The low does get blocked correctly. Ninja Killer wise to it. And it's it's that low projectile just has so much block stun that like it just locks you in. You want to anti-air, but you can't. You literally have to just hold the jump in. Now watching his toes, that second hit of it. That is super unsafe up close like that. And you're not going to want to do that to a player like Ninja Killer. So what a conversion. What? It? What? Is that done? What? Even though that combo, this combo's not even done yet, and you might go into a brutality, but he does not. Never mind. Hello? 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 Okay. He got it. He got it. He got it. He do got it. it. Do he, it. He, do he, it. He got do it. it. Do it. Do it. Oh, it, my God. You got it, bro. You got it, bro. Got In it. pure Ninja Killer fashion, of course he's going to be the showman. Of course he's going to do that extended combo. And that's just one clip. He was putting on some masterclass combos that I have never seen before. Now, I don't know if that's because Chameleon makes these combos possible, or Ninja Killer is just that guy or a combination of both. But either way, it was actually fun to watch somebody play Mortal Kombat 1 for once. So shout out to Ninja Killer. I didn't think that was possible, but he proved me wrong. And I think you should give the person their flowers when flowers are due, even if it's a game that we don't particularly like. However, there was a comment made by Sonic Fox yesterday against a player called Hourglass, and I wanted to get your opinions on this. Now, this isn't so much of a character assessment of Sonic Fox or me really attacking him. It's nothing like that, but I do find this interesting because this is a mentality that people have or something that they do when they lose on a fighting game. So Sonic Fox lost to Hourglass. Hourglass was playing Melina, and he really did put on a masterclass with his Melina, and I think he made it quite fine to the tournament. I think he might have gotten third or second. I can't remember. My memory is a little bit hazy, but it was it was definitely in the top four as far as I can remember. Cuidado con lo tienen en la esquina abajo no. El overhead que no ha entrado una sola vez a Sony Fox, pero aquí mucha ventaja para Hot Glass. La entrada y sí señores. Hot Glass of Rain elimina en el mismo torneo dos veces a Sony Fox y aquí con un besito para ella con brutalidad. Se la lleva. 3 a 2. Por encima de Sonic Fox. But Sonic Fox went on to say, Oh my god, I picked the wrong cameo on accident in tournament and lost. GG's to Hourglass. I've never used Natara allow before, so I was just winging it. And I think this is a little bit of a lame thing to do. And the reason I think that is that Sonic Fox... For as much as people might not like him, for as much as people might have their opinions on his character, I think it's fair to say that he is top three best Mortal Kombat players of all time, maybe top two, maybe butting heads with Ninja Killer. And that's historically. I don't know about Mortal Kombat 1, but historically I'd put him up there. And so for Hourglass to be a player of his caliber, and then him to say something like that. What do you guys think about that? Because I think it's a little bit of a cop-out. I think it's a little bit lame when people do that. And it's not just Sonic Fox that does this. When people that are not expected to lose, lose games, they always come out of excuses. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. In my younger years, this is definitely something that I did. It's not something I do anymore. If I lose now, I just sort of shrug it off. However, with the exception of people on Tekken when they won and done me, let me just add this in here real, real quick because this is going to be a very short video. If you won and done me on Tekken but you know who I am and you send me a message saying, oh, let me just take these points, I'm not going to reply to you and I'm not going to acknowledge you. I've had a couple of you saying, oh, will you put this match in your videos? The answer is no. I will put your matches in my videos if you ask me to, if we bump into each other online, if you play the full set. But if you beat me in the first game and leave, I, I'm, I'm not acknowledging you. It's just not going to happen. However, like I said, if you manage to beat me and you want your videos in my video, then by all means, I'm happy to do that. But going back to this, I've never understood the mentality of not just taking your L and keeping it moving. And I don't know if this is something that you guys do, but it's something that I've seen Sonic Fox do over and over again, whether it's about lag and now about picking the wrong cameo. Now, I don't know how you pick the wrong cameo. I mean, you've been playing tournament for a very long time and 
for you to just choose the wrong cameo, especially when, as far as I'm aware, if you do pick the wrong character or the wrong cameo in tournament, you are allowed to change. I'm pretty sure that is a thing you can message the tournament organizers, but let's let's say that it's not. Let's say that's not a thing. I still think it's a little bit unfair to Hourglass, who has now really had his win undermined, and there are people on Twitter saying that it kind of sucks that Hourglass has beaten Sonic Fox in tournament, in a relevant tournament, and Sonic Fox sort of undermined his loss. And I know it's done from a place of salt. I know it's done from a place of trying to protect your ego or protect that you are number one and you can only beat me if I make little mistakes here and there. But as Dallas said here, and rightfully so, how do you accidentally pick the wrong cameo in a tournament setting? And I'm really on Dallas's side here. I don't believe that's what happened. I think Sonic got beaten fair and square. I think he tried something, it didn't work. And so he fell back on that. But again, this is something that you see in fighting games a lot. Whether it be, oh, I picked my second character. Oh, I didn't get enough sleep. Oh, I was a bit hungover, this, that, and the other. I've noticed that the more high level you are, the more you're unwilling to accept that maybe somebody that is not considered to be on your level could beat you and so the, the excuses come out. It's really just a short video guys, I just wanted to get your opinions on this. I do have a longer video coming out later today about hell divers and how some people are trying to insert activism flags into the game and are now calling the developers bigots, so we're going to get onto that a little bit later on. But I want to know what you guys think about this, do you think Sonic Fox undermined his competitor? Do you think Hourglass only won because Sonic Fox accidentally picked the wrong cameo? Or do you think that Sonic Fox is just making excuses? And is it something that you do? Let's start a conversation in the comment section below because I know it's something I've done when I was younger. I remember playing Tekken Tag 2 and I remember, <laughs> I don't know why I did this, but I used to play Feng Wei and Jim Pachi or Ancient Ogre and Jim Pachi. And I used to always do this thing where I was like, oh, I couldn't tag in Jim Pachi. So that's the reason that you want some dumb shit like that. Well, I used to say, if my Jim Pachi had made it into Rage, you wouldn't have been able to survive. You know, stupid excuses that people come out with. And how do you also feel about people that only pick one character? Now, the reason that I'm asking that is there's a lot of new people that are picking up Tekken. And I've had a couple of matches saying, pick any other character and I'll beat you. And I've always found that a very weird thing. If I can beat you with one character and I can beat you with one move, why would I deviate from that? Surely I should just be able to use one move and one character if that's all it takes to beat you. That's like telling a UFC fighter, you can only beat me by doing an uppercut. It's like, if you can't block the move, if you can't defend against it, if you can't sway out of the way, why should I stop using it? And also, if you can't beat this one character, why are you worrying about all the other characters? Like, just imagine for a second you're in a street fight and you're beating somebody by doing a rear naked choke hold. You're beating somebody by just elbowing them. And then they turn around to you and say, stop doing that. Do a different move and see if you can beat me. Kind of makes no sense to me. And the same sort of thing applies to fighting games. If you're using King, for example, and you can just beat people by doing throws, isn't it on the person that is losing to the throws over and over again to figure out how to deal with them it's not really your problem right if you can't beat somebody because of something doesn't that mean that you're the lesser player this is just my opinion anyway i'm trying to apply it to different things in life where if something's working why would you change it shouldn't it be the person that's taking the l that has to change it do you think, and this is a question to you guys, do you think that you're a better player if you can use 30 characters on the roster and I can use two, but the two that I can use can beat all 30 of yours? Or do you think that the person that can just use the one or two characters is the better fighting game player? I know there's probably going to be conflicting opinions. I've asked multiple people this in real life and the responses have been very, very different and very surprising to me. So I want to know where you guys stand. Let me know in the comment section below. Tune into the video later on, guys. Take care, have a good day and peace.